Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Magnetic Farms, and we are just wrapping up our fuel pump install here. Uh, we had our fuel pump rebuilt because it was leaking through the throttle shaft, which is kind of a common problem for uh, these big cam Cummins with the uh, pressure time fuel system. So um, we pulled the pump off, um, took it down to North Carolina to this uh, cool shop down there called uh, Carolina Powertrain, and had them rebuild it and we put it back on and everything seems pretty nice so far but uh first we gotta hook a trailer to it and take it out on the road and see what happens but so far everything seems pretty good it was pretty nice and uh had to make a few adjustments uh we had another fuel filter this one didn't have the uh didn't have this fuel filter that's back here <sighs> this guy right here um this is an uh, additional fuel filter this is actually a 10 micron filter this filter out here is a 14 so it goes through the 14 first and then into the 10 uh, it's just a backup for um, catching any small particles or any trash that's going to go into the pump or into the injectors and i don't know if you guys know it but uh, on these step timing engines the injectors are extremely expensive uh, a normal big cam uh, injector isn't really that too expensive i think they're like 70 100 bucks or something like that um, but the step timing injectors are stupid expensive so uh, I, I want to kind of just avoid having any issues out of those, so try to filter the fuel as much as possible and um, try to make the, the system as uh, easily maintainable as possible. But... Can't see what's going on, but there's a little itty bitty teeny tiny wrench in there. This, this little guy right here, they're handy to have. It's going at this back bolt here which happens to not be the same as the rest of the bolts but we're going to get it out of the way now we're, we're we're taking out a bolt on a fuel pump uh it happens to be a 7 16th uh 12 point and it's jammed up here between this bracket that goes up and down here and side of the fuel pump it's uh it's fairly tight in there but my hands start to come back to me again keep on going get this, this thing off here hardest bolt to take off of here i believe besides the one that's on the bottom that's got that curved wrench on it uh, but that, that one's already loose so uh, hopefully that should be okay for it. I hope it's isn't on video because I don't even really have anything to say about this. <laughs> it is on video. I think the bracket has got us. This bracket back here. Mm -hmm. Right, just going through some differences uh the, the pumps between my uh my freightliner and my peterbilt so they both have nt88 engines which is a big cam 4 uh one of their later series right before they went to the n14 mechanical um they're both pretty similar with the exception of the peterbilt has this line that comes off of the main feed uh the main pressure feed off of the shutoff solenoid that goes to the step timing control valve, which is like below the fuel pump mounted to the side of the block. <coughs> uh, it also has a mechanical tachometer uh, lead coming out of it. So this doesn't have that mechanical tach lead. 
uh, provision coming out of it as such. So we're gonna get us a new tack cable to put in there and hopefully our tack will, will start working. But um, most, besides that, most everything is pretty much the same. Um, you have your fuel inlet back here um, and you have a fuel return going back to the tank and uh, another fuel return back here going back to the tank. And on the side you have, on the bottom you have your governor spring housing, which um, the steel right here, these one, two, three, four bolts. This houses your governor spring and your button. Uh, when you pull this out of here, you'll see all that stuff. Your, your springs will be inside there. The governor springs basically control how fast the engine spins. Um, once it gets to a certain uh, set speed, the flyweights on the governor will have spun out and start moving the plunger towards shutting the fuel off and derating the engine. That's what slows the engine down at a set speed. That's adjustable. <clears throat> but um, I actually want to slow this engine down. I think it's set at like 2250, and I only want it set at 2100. Um, but I still want it turned up probably about 15 or 17%. Um, with this truck, uh, I want to keep the Freightliner basically pretty stock. Um, it's a 315 horse the uh <laughs> 315 horse i might turn up 365 but it's got high compression pistons in it so uh they both are leaking from the throttle shaft which is the reason why i took this one off the truck and this one off the truck as well uh, this one came off months ago and i've been bsing on finding somewhere to do it i finally found somewhere uh, i'm gonna run them down in north carolina and drop them off in charlotte and have them both done at the same place and i actually have a third pump that's on the uh it's on the parts engine for this deal, and uh, that's interesting. Um, the other drive coupler, the drive coupler for the Freightliner, was uh, just slipped over here, and the drive coupler for this one is actually bolted, bolted through here. It's trying to pump fuel. There's no fuel pump. Anyway, um, so we'll get this fixed within the next couple days or so, and. Hopefully the, the Peterbilt will be back on the road, and then when I get some time, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and put this back on the road. But uh, I do want to make some changes while they have this thing at the shop, which is uh, I actually want to have this end housing swapped over from one to one. The, the Freightliner has two fuel filters on it. It's got the fuel filter that, if you look in my other videos, um, I'm going to a spin-on style um, water separator on the frame, and I got rid of the rake core, which is over there underneath the workbench. And it also has the spin on style right at the fuel pump. Uh, I'd like to do that on the Peterbilt. I'd like to put the spin on style filter right at the fuel pump. So I'll have two filters on there as well. So um, having too many fuel filters is not necessarily a bad thing. So. runs pretty well um, I'm happy uh, it's cold and I only have one more day of good weather before it starts turning to <clears throat> feces <laughs>